I have repeated what I said. What the villagers did was absolutely wrong, and I've tried to set it out in the statement I gave today um, from a legal and constitutional point of view. I don't care whether, in fact, and, and there are doubts about the story that where Mr. Miles' place is, uh, is some sort of a sacred site, because as I understand it, it's a house he has that was there before. And when uh, the Mayan from whom he got it was living in it, there was not a problem. But grant that the Mayans of the village were correct in wanting Mr. Miles to be dispossessed, to be removed. You cannot go about it in that way. As I pointed out, uh, under our law, somebody you say is wrongfully in occupation of your land, you get a court order for an eviction, and that is when the agents of the state can go in to help you enforce that court order. When the Mayans say they had been writing to the police, the police cannot respond to them because that is not the job of the police. It is a dispute between them and, and, and their claim as to ownership and, and, and as to cultural patrimony and another private citizen. They first needed to get a court order. And that is where the rub is. Christina Cox seems to think that our acceptance of the entitlement of the Mayas in, in, in Toledo, in southern Belize, to some kind of land rights is tantamount to some concession of sovereignty, some concession that they have rights that supersede the laws of this country. That is absolutely not the case, and she and the MLA must get that straight if we are to be able to proceed. That having been said, I made the point. We have conceded that they have rights, and those rights must be vindicated and must be spelled out, must be defined uh, with some precision. But until that is done, if ever they do what they did again, the same thing will happen.